Hi there everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach and welcome to another one of my album reviews. And this time, we're still carrying on with The Doors, if you're one of my regular viewers, you shouldn't have already known that, if you're not. This time we are talking about The Doors Absolutely Live, and this is part of me going through and completing out The Doors discography. Uh, this album is interesting. Now, I went through a phase uh, in the 90s. Actually, it's going to be a roundabout story, okay. So in the 90s, and even before the 90s, there was a music club that I'm sure most people in North America have heard of, uh, at least if you're my age. you know, If, you, if you're a, a Xenial, Gen X or older, you've definitely heard of it. If you're a Millennial, and you definitely haven't heard of it if you're Gen Z, unless you heard about it somewhere else. Uh, there were album clubs. Uh, one was called Columbia House, and up here in Canada, I don't know if they had it in the U.S., but up here in Canada, we also had one called BMG. And it was the same idea as Columbia House. You know, you join the club, you get X number of CDs for one cent, and you got to pay the shipping on everything. And then you, uh, you know, you got to buy so many more CDs over a certain period of time, and you go from there. This was part of my... I think this is part of my original, you know, so many CDs for one cent. And that's pretty much the only reason I think I ever picked up this album. Because when I had picked up this album, uh, the only Doors album I had owned at this point was uh, the self-titled debut album. And I didn't know, I knew a bunch of the songs on here because basically this kind of reads as a live greatest hits. But I didn't, really have an appreciation for it. And even now, when I go back and listen to it, I'm so, so about it. There was a huge thing in the... Now, this album is unique and special in some ways, and in other ways is kind of bullshit. It is a live album. Everything on this album was recorded live. Very much the opposite of the legendary Kiss Alive 1. If you're not familiar with the story... And I will do get more into it when I cover Kiss Alive 1. Uh, or Kiss Alive, sorry. Is they were, you know, they recorded the songs live. But due to recording issues and tape problems, stuff like that, there was a lot of overdubs done later on and plugged into it to fix the sound and fill it out. Uh, most of it was usually like, Ace's guitar or something like that. This album here, there were no plugins where there was overdubs done later on or anything like that. This one was taken from a multitude of recordings and then cut. Literally, and this is back in the days of actual tape, okay? Uh, quarter inch tape, I believe it was. So, you know, yeah, I think. They actually had to cut, literally cut the tape where they wanted to cut it and splice it all together using tape, stuff like that. It's not like today where you got Pro Tools where you just use cut and paste and do it, you know? And you still... So there, there was an actual art and, and a real effort to this. And if I remember correctly, uh, Paul Rothschild, who is the producer, I believe, on like every Doors album, and this one included is the one that sat there and went through all these recordings and literally was cutting and pasting and, or cutting and taping and doing all this to get all the album put together. Uh, because there's some tracks where, um, hold on, which one is it? Uh, petition the Lord with prayer. And then there's a medley afterwards. Oh, sorry. Celebration of the Lizard King. That's what I'm thinking of. Celebration of the Lizard King. They were never able to put Celebration of the Lizard King together properly on the album they wanted to put it on. Uh, they were having problems with it. I don't remember everything in the story. So, But they would perform it live. So Rothschild specifically hours and thousands of feet of tape. Hundreds of thousands of feet of tape. I think there was like miles quoted. It's written in here. I didn't reread really it before doing this. Um where, you know, he was getting all the best parts of each performance and trying to put them all together so he could actually put together a proper full version of Celebration of the Lizard King. This is a work of art because you really can't hear 
the cutting and the splicing, you, you know, like, they put this together primo, so there's really, it sounds like one giant great concert as opposed to a bunch of little concerts put together. So it's fantastic that way. Uh, let's, let's get into the album, all right? Since, you know, five minutes into this review and, you know, other than Celebration of the Lizard King, I haven't mentioned anything. <laughs> All right, uh, it opens up with the house announcer doing a little announcer thing. It's kind of cool. It's in there. It gives you that live effect. You close your eyes, you smoke a joint, sit back, put the headphones on. And when I say smoke a joint, please remember, in Canada, it is 100% legal to the point where you can grow four plants on your own property and have at it. All right, so no law breaking. No law breaking. Uh, then you get into Who Do You Love? Good tune. Fun tune. I don't mind it on here. I enjoy it. Gets the album up and running pretty good. Uh, is it one of my favorite Doors songs? No. Is it one of the Doors songs that I really want to listen to and go with? No. <laughs> Alright, after that we get into a medley again. We get into our first medley. Sorry, there's a couple medleys on here. We get into our first medley. The first medley is Alabama Song, Backdoor Man, Love Hides, and 5 to 1. Now, I don't know if this is how these were always performed live or if this was clever editing and splicing that put this medley together. Medleys are really normal nowadays. Uh, you know, you, you hear people constantly talking about medleys or, or um, you know, smashing stuff together, stuff like that. There's a lot of bands that would use medleys live so they could play at least bits and parts of songs that people want to hear so they can all say that they heard a song. And let's face it, if you're at a Doors concert, chances are you're probably wrecked. So long as you actually heard at least part of the song, you know the song was played and you're happy, okay? Uh, but Alabama song going into Backdoor Man, well, that's that's basically, you know, not too far off of this. You know, not exactly the same, but not too far off. And it works well. Uh, Love Hides, it's one of those ones where it's okay track, but I'm not a fan of it over... Like, I'm not not a song I'm ever going to really go out of my way to... Like, Who Do You Love? You know, they're both under tracks that I'm just not going to go out of my way to listen to. And 5 to 1 closes it off. And 5 to 1 is a great song. I love 5 to 1. 5 to 1, 1 to 5. No, one, you know, great, great. Um... After that, we go to Build Me a Woman. Then you get When the Music's Over. Good tune. I'm surprised that they put it in here. Uh, when the Music's Over is one of those songs I really would have thought you'd kind of save for, like, kind of the end of the show, you know? I mean, it's cliche, but it's like the end, you know? You do when the music's over and then the end, you know? And that, me, that I would have thought that was the way you would close out a show every time, you know? <laughs> With this catalog. Um, you got, then it goes into Close to You. Meh. Uh, Universal Mind. Meh. Petition the Lord with Prayer. Meh. Medley, Dead Cats, Dead Rats. All right. Break On Through. That works when it goes from the one into the other. And it's Break On Through number two. So it's not even, you know, like the original version. It's kind of like an alti version. Um, and then you got Celebration of the Lizard, which is comprised of multiple parts. That would be Lion in the Streets, Wake Up, Little Game, The Hill Dwellers, um, and then uh, Not to Touch the Earth, Names of the Kingdom, The Palace of Exile, and then you're back to regular song, and the album ends with Soul Kitchen. <laughs> Celebration of the Lizard King is probably the best reason to listen to this. Like, really, for me, whenever I used to put on this album, and I'll be honest, I don't listen to it a lot. I've never listened to it a lot. But most of the time when I put it on, it would be, you know, pretty much going straight to Celebration of the Lizard. Or, sorry, Celebration of the Lizard. I keep saying Celebration of the Lizard King, my apologies. Uh, but Celebration of the Lizard, that that's pretty much where I start listening to this album, and that was it. <sighs> I still have it after all these years, and I don't know why. It's, I really, I, I don't even remember the last time I honestly listened to this album. 
even when I put together collections of live songs, live tracks, like I used to do mixtapes, you know, I used to put together live mixtapes, but it'd be different bands, you know, just sound like a live mixtape. I never put anything from this album on there, ever. It, it's not that it's bad, it's just... Most of the tracks on here are not songs you really want to hear The Doors performing live. Which, you know, like, if you if, if you are a true blue fan of The Doors, okay, you're going to be okay with this. If you're your average Doors listener, you know, I didn't mention any of the greats, really, except for Break On Through, which is part of a medley, so it's not even a full version. You know, Light My Fire is not here. The End's not here. Uh, um, People Are Strange isn't here. You know, like, uh, L.A. Woman honestly can't be here. So when you start going with all those kind of things, you know, like this album kind of starts to fall flat in a great Doors catalog. You know, you're better off to go out, get yourself a Doors Greatest Hits album, and then put a live crowd over in the background. That's, you know, that's what I would do to give you a good Doors album. Because you just, you gotta be one hell of a hardcore fan, I guess, to enjoy this. And I'm just not, I, I have it all. Including the last, or I, including the two albums without Jim Morrison, which will be my next two reviews after this, you know, Other Voices and Full Circle. I've got both of those. And I will listen to both of those before I listen to this one. Like, out of everything in my Doors catalog, this will be the last album I ever listened to, really. Which is spoilers for when I go to do my big Doors recap, but this really isn't going to fall in the recap. It was never really meant to fall into the recap. Because as much as it's officially a Doors album, and it was done by, you know, uh, Paul Rothschild and everything, and it was, you know, it's not considered an official catalog. You know, official, the big official catalog does not consist of any live albums. It's just the studio albums as far as it goes. Anyways, folks. Those are my thoughts. Those are my opinions. Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. Let me know what you think. If you like Absolutely Life, I'd, I'd love to know what you like about it because I really just not into it. Ah, please hit that like button, that subscribe button. Uh, there's a link to Patreon below. Feel free to check that out. Peace, love, take care.